So why is it so darn hard to choose colors for your quilt? You've got all these fabrics to choose from. You may even have all these fabrics in your stash, but bringing them together is always a challenge. The key is knowing your color zone. We all have one. They're just as individual as we are, and it's made up of a range of colors and a range of contrast. You just need to find it. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. We all have our favorite color. And it's just a beginner thing that what we do is we buy that color over and over and over again. And then we wonder why we can't make a quilt with it. Key to combining fabrics together is contrast. And you can find it within your own personal color zone. So let's get started. Now, if you haven't watched my first two videos in this series, I'm gonna put a link up here because it's really important that you go back and watch them. There's some concepts here that you need to understand and they will explain them. So the first thing you need to do is grab your favorite color. You more than likely have lots of it in your fabric stash, but if you're a beginner quilter, you can also grab paint chips, you can grab a favorite article of clothing, or you, you can grab one of your favorite things. You may only have one favorite color, you may have two, three, seven, it doesn't matter. But the point is, we want to find them on the color wheel. So here is one of my favorite colors. It's a yellow green, and it sits a couple of shades darker than the pure hue. And if you look at the color wedges, it sits just below the top rim. If your favorite color is navy, we're going to find it at the bottom of the cone where the low value shades are. If a soft peach is your favorite color, you're going to find it on the top with the low saturated, high value tints. And if your favorite color is more of a neutral taupe, you will find it in the center next to the desaturated grays. So when we're looking for your colors on the color wheel, we are not looking for exact. Close is good enough. I started doing this video and I realized you were not going to be successful with it unless you had these color wedges. Of all the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. So I have made a printout that you can download from my website under more and then under color theory. Just get it done quilts.com. I'll leave a link down below in the notes. So, you're probably rolling your eyes and going, okay, Karen, why did we do that? I already knew my favorite colors. The important thing is we need to find the area on the color wedge where your colors are located. Almost everyone will find that they have a zone within the wedge. Are they found on the top with the tints or on the side with the shades? in the corner with the hues, in the middle with the tones, or on the right with the achromatic grays. And where I like to play is just below the lip in the shades area. So the next step is finding your color range. I'm going to use this color as an example. So you found your color within the wedge, and now we need to look to the right where colors are less saturated, and to the left, where the colors are more saturated. We need to look up, where the colors have more value, and down to see whether the colors have less value, and we need to see how far away from our core color do we still like the color. This is where I like to play. I like the slightly darker shades and the slightly lighter tints of the pure hue. You may like much more desaturated tints than I do and a much larger range, or go all the way to white. Or maybe you like to play on the dark side and go all the way to black. Or maybe you like to play with the tones of the middle and go all the way to gray. Some of us go far. Some of us may go from white to black and like the whole wedge. Some of us may have a very small range. And some people may like big jumps. So you like the white, you like the hue, and you like the black, but you don't really like any in between. Again, there is no wrong answer. Everybody is individual. It's what you like and in what you're comfortable with. So now you have a range of colors within the same hue that you can work with. Now the last step is looking at the color wheel and the hues that are beside our color is you need to go to the right on the color wheel and make your colors cooler, and do you still like it? And go to the left and make your colors warmer, do you still like it? So take the hues that you like and let's plot them on the color wheel. I'll also include one of these in the handout. 
By plotting our favorite color hues and the new hues on the color wheel, we discover our natural harmonies and the inherent contrast within those harmonies. So if your colors are on the opposite sides, you like strong contrast with your colors. And if your colors are on the same side, you like low contrast between your colors. Now you have a range in hue, now you have a range in saturation, and now you have a range in value. You can do so much more with this. Now what this range does is it gives us contrast. So when we're working with a pattern, we have a range now of colors that we go to. And when you're looking for fabric, you're looking for fabric at the limits of this color zone. Let me give you an example to show you what it might look like. We're going to use purple and we're going to use purple in the corners as a constant. In this version, we are using two purples which are less saturated than our corner pieces, but they still give good contrast. In this version, we've gone with a shade and an another purple. There's not as much contrast, but there's still enough to produce good results. In this version, our range of purples goes to the desaturated gray. And in this version, we've provided the highest contrast with white and black. Now, when you don't have a lot of range within a particular color, you can use the colors next to it, as we've done in this example. And the farther your colors are away from purple, the higher the contrast. And you can go right across the color wheel. Now you still might be rolling your eyes going, okay, so why did we do that? Our brains are wired for our own color zone. It is a combination of environment and exposure and DNA, life experience. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not gonna get into why you particularly like them. But the truth is they're yours. And when you are using your own colors, the ones within your own color zones, there's a certain sense of peace belonging and comfort that you get from them. There's an ease, your brain doesn't need to work as hard. And when we're working outside of our color zone, whether we're working for someone else or we're trying to do a different kind of palette, our brain is always trying to shift them back. So it's a bias that you need to be aware of. <laughs> this YouTube video just does not want to be made. I have been working on this YouTube video for six weeks and originally my intent was to be outside in the sunshine with all sorts of spring flowers, but it's been so wet and cold, of course, there's nothing to do outside. So I started it inside and then I had my operation and then I came back and because of the funeral arrangements and everything, all my videos, I have these big puffy red eyes from crying. And then of course my hair is so long and it's in my face. So I get a haircut and I start all over again. And last night I thought I had it all done and I woke up this morning and half of my movie's missing. I mean, it's difficult enough to take a two hour workshop and try and cram it into 10 minutes, but I'm sorry. This is not my best video. If I ever meet you in person, we'll laugh about it. Oh, so my next video is going to be about how to take all this and apply it to a quilt pattern that you like. So cross my fingers, I'll have that done for next week. It's just been one of those videos. I'm sure all YouTubers have it. Filmmaking is not my forte, but oh my gosh, this has been tough. <laughs> I'm laughing through the tears here. So anyways, if this made any sense to you, please give it a thumbs up. If it's helping you get your color confidence, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram at Just Get It Done Quilts. So take care and I'll see you next time.